Hey everyone, we are in Midtown Detroit. We're at Filson. Welcome to 5 to 10 in the D, episode 2. Our next guest with me, sitting right next to me, is my good buddy, Dave Woodruff. How you doing, man? Good to see you, John. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for being on. So what inspired you to get into advertising, and where did it all start? Well, you know, I, honestly, I was in radio. I, I interned at uh, WXYZ Radio and then WJR. And WJR was a news intern during the 1980 uh, Republican the National thing. Convention. Yeah so, WJR, yeah. yeah, so I worked with, yeah. Yeah, most of those guys are still there. But I was in radio, and then when I came back and graduated from Miami University, I took up a, a part-time job as a producer at XYZ News Talk Radio, okay. and uh, did that for about a year and a half. Did some, you know, broadcasting myself, covering motorsports and a few other things. I called the third turn on the hydroplane races for about three years with those guys, wow. and then I was like, "Hey, you know, if you're going to work full time, got to go to Des Moines or someplace and cut your <laughs> teeth." And I said, "There was a guy working in the sales department at the, at the station. He said, look, if you want to make money, go get out of the." You know, behind the mic and go start selling. So I did that, and that led to um, a connection with someone you know, Debbie Broder. I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. Debbie. Yeah, from yes, and she was yeah. working at Donor. Yeah, and she said, "Hey, we've got an opening for an assistant account executive working um, on a couple of accounts late." And I'm like, "Oh, cool! Like what? Like Fago, Detroit Free Press, some really cool Detroit accounts." And I took off for that, and then I ended up, you know, going into advertising. I I worked at Donor for several years, and then I went to Campbell Wall. Just like your previous guest, Mike, Mike Kraft, worked on Chevy truck. Yeah. Um, then I got transferred and moved to New York. And Leanne and I had been married nine months, and we moved to New York City to work. I worked on Chevrolet Regional, so I worked on the, the Northeast region there. Okay. That lasted about two and a half years, and then I was recruited to come back. I had worked on Little Caesars at Donor, and I got recruited to come back and run the office for Cliff Freeman and Partners, which was part of Saatchi, the agency that took over from Donor on Little Caesars. So wow. I, I worked on that business here. And uh, that was a great run, had a lot of fun, um, and then ended up uh, um, getting recruited back by, uh, uh, to, leave the, to leave and go to the, um, go to the print side. I, w I ended up getting uh, asked by a guy I used to work for at Camp Leewald, Dennis Connaughton, to come work uh, at Field and Stream and Outdoor Life and Ski and Skiing as the regional marketing director. Mm. So that's how I ended up in media. And then from there, there's some reorganization, ended up in sales. Okay. Uh, selling for Field and Stream and Outdoor Life. Then from there was a progression of different publishing companies. I worked at uh, Gruner & Yar. I worked at, um, uh, gosh, well, certainly Hearst. I was there for almost 12 years as corporate director. Then I ended up at Bloomberg for about four and a half years. And then back in March, I, I joined Entrepreneur. So wow. it's been a it's been a run all, you know, all that. Involved with the AdCraft Club, involved with the DAA, involved with a whole lot of stuff. And, um, yeah, so that's that's been the run. It's been it's been great. I love it. I still I still love the business. You know, yeah. you worked on a lot of different campaigns. Ugh. Is there is there one campaign that just stands out to you that was just yeah near I mean, dear I, to you and just like your favorite? Yeah, I love the I love the Little Caesars work both at Donor and at Cliff Freeman. Both yeah. of those you know those campaigns were incredible. I, I wish that kind of you know stuff could be done again, but. I think probably my favorite one was, <laughs> I'm not getting all kinds of grief for this, but <laughs> it was the Chevy versus Ford pickup truck advertising from <laughs> 1985 or 86, which is this. We we went out and tested these vehicles against each other for a month in the desert in, uh, with AMCI, which is a company that's still around, Yeah. Um, in the desert in California, Car Carlsbad Raceway, and we came back with these, uh, these claims that were razor thin, but... It was a great campaign, I and mean, we, you know, stood two two trucks on the end, and you know the Ford would fall over, and that was hard for me because I come from a Ford family. But yeah. <laughs> that was, but that was for me working on that was really cool. Wow, yeah, it was fun. That's that's awesome. How would how would you compare, you know, your time working in New York to, to you know what 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 would be the difference of, of the Detroit market versus what you experienced in New York? Yeah, I'd say that um, no question. I think we see it and hear it on the sales side now a lot, but it's a much smaller, much tighter community. Yeah. In, in here in Detroit, and I, and I like that. I, I like the fact that you know people in a very tight community. It's it, it looks out for each other really well. I think we've seen a lot of that this year. You help a lot of people. You've helped me in my career, uh, but also just your love for philanthropy. Um, Children's Hospital, which is very near to my heart. Um, I had an aunt who uh, passed away there um, at a very young age of 17 years of age, so I always really appreciated the work you were doing to 
raise uh, funds for, for uh, um, Children's Hospital, but also um, your brother's organization, the Bob Woodruff Foundation. Yeah. Can you um, talk to us about that and the history of that and where it all started yeah, and where I mean, it is today? Mo I think most people know, although now it's getting on to being quite a long time ago when it happened, but in 2006, you know, Bob was 23 days into the job as being the new co-anchor of World News Tonight, along with Elizabeth Vargas, and he was reporting in um, in Iraq while he was waiting for the uh, the Palestinian elections to happen. He had been over there for and and, and he jumped over to Iraq to cover it, and he got blown up by an IED on, on uh, January 29, 2006. He ended up with real severe head injuries, all kinds of complications. He was in a coma at Bethesda Naval Hospital for 36 days, and even after that, when he was in the hospital and had woken up, which was a miracle unto itself. Uh, we spent a lot of time there. I spent almost six weeks straight there the first go um, after coming back from Germany with him because he was evacuated in um Hospital. But uh, we saw what we saw there was something we'd never been you know, exposed to before, and that's the military and the military hospital system and injured soldiers and service members. And so we, uh, but what we we were lucky. We had ABC, we had Disney, all these this structure that was built up around us to support Bob. And we also were all lucky enough to have our own careers and, and great bosses that let us give time to be there helping recover. But these guys did, and we you know they were getting the same medical care, but we knew and we were told that you know the supportive care they were not going to get. And when they left, they were definitely not going to have the kind of resources we would have. You know, yeah. most of them are in their twenties, not married, whatever. So we just said, you know. Coming off my experience with Children's Hospital and creating that um, that 501c3, I, uh, I knew how to do it. And, and Lee and I, Bob's wife and, and my wife Leanne, um, and Bob too, as, as much as he could, we were like, hey, look, if you know, we can do something, we can at least try to raise a little bit of money and help a family or two, let's do it. And, off. and now, 13, 14 years later, uh, we've raised uh, and given away almost $70 million wow. to about 420 different veteran service organizations around the country in various uh, you know, states and, and doing various things. And it's become, um, it's become a monster. It's like, and it's one of the, we're now one of the largest military charities in the country. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. You guys just returned from a trip uh, just this last Monday in New York, an event. Yeah. Right? So we went. We had Stand Up for Heroes, which is our kind of our marquee event where we raised the, you know a good majority of the money that we raise every year. Um, and uh, Bruce Springsteen has fronted that concert or, or show every year except one year, two years ago when he was doing his Broadway show. He couldn't do it. And it's basically it kicks off the uh, New York Comedy Festival, which runs for ten days in New York. And uh, it's a combination of, of uh, both um, music and comedy. And this year we had uh, four, com four comedians. We had two uh, performers, Bruce and, um, and Cheryl Crow, who okay. joined us late. And then we had four comedians. John Stewart has been with us almost the entire time. Yeah. And I'm happy to call John a friend now. And he, he along with Hassan Minaj, uh, Ronnie Chang, who was hilarious <laughs> right now. But it was one of the, the best events we've ever had and we raised 5.7 million months. wow and what and one night and here we are you know monday the day we will hopefully launch this this second episode is veterans day right how can uh, people get involved with the bob woodruff foundation yeah i think there's you know number one they can donate and uh, the easiest way to do that is go to the bob woodruff foundation.org website um that's and you can see what we're doing there um we are going to try to do more local events here in detroit and i'm hoping uh we're actually on Coming up, doing an event with the Pistons. We'll be uh, we've got a Bob Woodruff Foundation night down at uh, LRC uh, or LLC, LLA, LCA, <laughs> LCA. Um, so we're uh, we're going to do that, and we'll, we'll, we're hoping we've done an event, a Sporting Clays event. There's a big surprise, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, the last couple of years, we took off the last two years. We're going to try to resurrect that next year. So you know, we're we're, we're trying to do things locally, but the um, you know really for us. We have a national mission because we take grant requests in from all over the country. So we try to make sure that we're supporting veterans wherever and whenever they need it. And that's that's a national mission. Yeah. Hey, Dave, buddy, John, thank you so much for being on 5 to 10 in the D. Thanks and uh, everyone, thank you for watching. And uh, we'll see you uh, next time.